I'm rating everything in my smart home on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest on over 30 different smart home devices. Hopefully this should be helpful because I get a lot of people asking where they should get started. So I'm rating everything based on how much I use and how much I like the smart home devices in my house. So you're welcome to disagree with me down below on the ratings, but they are just my opinions. All right, first up is a smart door lock and this is the Schlage Encode Plus. And I love this because I can tap my Apple Watch or my iPhone up to the lock and it'll just open. So it's super easy to use, but I don't really use a smart door lock that often. It took us about two years to finally put a smart door lock on our front door because we mainly just use the garage door. So for our house, it's not really that necessary. So I'm rating it a six out of 10. Next over here, the video doorbell is a completely different story. I love this and I use it all the time. This is the Unified G4 doorbell and it records 24 seven to a hard drive inside. So there's no monthly fees or anything like that. I love this thing, 10 out of 10. Now, me and Allie both rated everything in our smart home blindly, so we didn't see each other's score. And for the most part, we rated everything almost the same, except for things like this. You rated the doorbell four out of 10? Why? Yeah, I mean, it's super slow loading up the feed. It takes forever. It's probably your old phone. Yeah. No. For security cameras, we're using hardwired ones, namely Unify and Reolink. And I love these cameras, but I probably overspent on how much I actually use the cameras. So eight out of 10. For the smart garage door, we're using the Meros and the Rat GDO, and we use these all the time, whether that's using our phone to open and close them to take the bikes out or with automations like turning on the lights automatically or letting us know if the garage door got left open. Solid nine out of 10. For our smart weather station, we're using Tempest and this thing works pretty good. It connects to Home Assistant, get a lot of data, can use it for automations, but when it's stormy out and I wanna use it for like lightning tracking and all that kind of stuff, it just goes offline because it hasn't had solar energy for the last like day and it runs out of battery. So five out of 10. Next up is the Lutron Smart Dimmer Switches. We have these all over the house. My family loves them. They're extremely easy to use and very reliable but they don't have some of the bells and whistles like the other smart switches have, and they are pricey, so they're not perfect. Nine out of 10. So if you don't wanna pay that hefty price tag of the Lutron dimmer switches, these Casa dimmer switches we have here in our bathroom are fantastic. They're way less expensive and they work great. They're just slightly less reliable because they use Wi-Fi, but I really like them. Nine out of 10. But Allie, she doesn't think so. Okay, tell me why you rated the Casa Dimmer switches a 5 out of 10. Well, I can, I can barely tell if they're on or off, and it's they're confusing to use, not as good as Lutron. Okay, it sounds like user error, so yeah, ignore her. Now, this technically isn't smart. This is the Lutron Motion Dimmer switch, but it's perfect for rooms like this. This is our laundry room, pantry, bathroom, closets, because you walk in and the lights turn on so fast. And they're not too expensive, so... 10 out of 10. Now, one more smart dimmer switch because this is really unique and I love this one. This is the Innovelli Red and it works like a normal dimmer switch, you know, controlling the ceiling lights, but it also can control the smart lights in this room as well. So if you double tap the bottom, I have it running an automation that turns off all the smart lights in here. I also have another Innovelli Red switch right here. This is an on off switch here in the kitchen and they control the pendant lights because there are smart bulbs in there and you don't wanna kill power to the smart bulb so you can automate them. So if you turn off the switch, it sends a command to turn off the smart bulbs. If you push the on switch, it will turn on the smart bulb. So it feels like a normal switch and it's a perfect application for this. 10 out of 10. Like I said, these are smart bulbs that are the Philips Hue filament bulbs and they can do warm and cool white. So they're pretty sweet and that's why I'm using them here in the kitchen. But I'm not using a whole lot of smart bulbs around the house. They can be a little inconvenient, hard to control. So we're only using a few, but they are great for accent lighting, seven out of 10. I also have a bunch of light strips around the house, like up here above the cabinets or in the family room underneath the cabinets. And I just love light strips because they're fun. They add a lot of light. They are still slightly unnecessary, like smart light bulbs, but I like them a lot more, eight out of 10. For the smart speakers, I used to use the Amazon Echoes all the time in my house, but lately they've been starting to annoy me and not because my kids are using them to prank me and all of that, which they do. And it's kind of funny, actually, they're changing all the settings and everything, but because Amazon 
is pushing all of their announcements and advertisements through them. And seriously, it's just so annoying. So four out of 10. Now for the HomePods, these annoy me way less. I use them to play music for the speakers for my TV and announcements for my smart home, but they are missing a lot of features that some of the other smart speakers have. So eight out of 10, but Ali rated them way less. HomePods, five out of 10, what? Well, they're just really average. I can't tell if it's hearing me because it doesn't have the ring, you know, like the echoes. And Siri like never knows the answer to anything ever. Oh yeah, she does have some good points, but I'm not gonna tell her that. Now for the Google displays, I have these scattered throughout my entire house and I like the displays for how clean they are, but I don't find myself using them that often. So six out of 10. For my smart irrigation controller, I'm using Ratio and I love this thing because it's so easy to use. You get on the app, set all the times for the drip, and I've been using it more than I thought I would because recently a uh, solenoid went bad and it alerted me in the app, so I was able to replace it and none of my plants died, so 10 out of 10. For a smart thermostat, we're using Ecobee, and I really like Ecobee because you can fine tune it exactly how you wanna use it, which is crucial for us here in Arizona because we have really hot summers and we're running our AC all the time, so, the smart thermostat is one of the few smart home devices that can actually save you money and pretty much pays for itself. So for that, 10 out of 10. For all the ceiling fans in our house, we're using the Bond Bridge. And I really like this because we bought inexpensive ceiling fans that use those little remotes and we can control all the fans in our house from just this one device, as well as the back patio shades from the Bond Bridge as well. So. Nine out of 10. So over here we have our smart home dashboard and this makes it so convenient to control things around the house. You just walk up to it, it turns on, press a button and like all the lights change. And we used to have it in a lot more convenient spot next to the couch, but our one year old was pressing all of the buttons. She could reach it and yeah, not good, very destructive. So we moved it over here and it's a little bit less convenient. We're not using it as much, so eight out of 10. For the TV, we're using the frame TV and the picture quality is meh, but the settings and controlling the Samsung TV is just garbage, so five out of 10. Frame TV, nine out of 10, are you serious? Yeah, it's beautiful, look at the thing. So we're using the Apple TV to control the frame TV and it works so much better. It's way more reliable, it's easy to use, but I don't wanna jinx myself because last time I said good things about the Apple TV and the HomePods paired with it, they started to unsync. So I had to reboot the HomePod stereo pair and then it started working fine. So eight out of 10 on the Apple TV. For our security system, we're using Ring. It integrates really well into our smart home system. We use it every single day and normally I would rate it a 10 out of 10, but since Ring made some policy changes and require a monthly fee if you buy it after a certain date, I can't give it a perfect score. Eight out of 10. I have a bunch of motion sensors like this all throughout the house and I love them to automatically turn on the lights and run other automations. And I have a few different kinds of motion sensors and they all seem to work well. 10 out of 10. Motion sensor, six out of 10. And whoa, did you just turn that motion sensor around? What? No. We also have contact sensors on almost all the doors, and I like these for automations. Like if this door opens up in the middle of the night, these hall lights turn on so I can go get a drink. And then when I'm going back to bed and this door closes, the hall lights turn off. And then if the kids need help in the middle of the night, we'll be alerted if their door opens. So 10 out of 10. I also have some vibration sensors scattered throughout the house, like underneath this kitchen counter. That way if it's nighttime and the lights are dim and I'm making some food, it will sense the vibrations of me working on the counter and automatically turn the lights brighter so I can see better. It's a lot of fun, but definitely not necessary. Seven out of 10. When it comes to the robot vacuum, we use this every single day. It works extremely well, saves us so much time. 10 out of 10. For smart outlets, I use them more than you think and they work really well. Like I have a smart power strip underneath this desk to turn on the speakers and it works great. I also use them to extend my Zigbee and Z-Wave networks, but they are a slight eyesore, so nine out of 10. For the server rack and all the networking equipment, I'm using Unify and it works extremely well, but it's probably a little overkill for what I need here at my house, so eight out of 10. For smart buttons, I don't really use them that often. I prefer shortcuts and buttons on my phone. I find that way more convenient. So I would say a three out of 10 on smart buttons. 
but Allie likes smart buttons and she says seven out of 10 because she doesn't like using her phone. When it comes to smart shades, we're using Lutron in this room and in our bedroom and we love them so much because they're so quiet. And we use the ones in our bedroom all the time to wake us up and to adjust them and whatnot. But we have smart shades in other rooms of our house that we don't use often, pretty much never. So it's a little unnecessary. So the overall rating for smart shades, I would say eight out of 10. For solar panels, I'm using Tesla. It works amazing. I pretty much pay $0 a month for energy, and that's including charging my car, for running the AC a bunch during the summer. And I do have three power walls, and that way I don't have to pay for peak pricing. I can just pull from the power walls or from the solar panels during that time. And I bought three, so that way if the grid was down in the middle of the night, I could just keep running my AC units, but that really hasn't happened. So it might be a little overkill, nine out of 10. The Echo Show 15 here in our kitchen, we use it mainly for the calendar and sometimes I'll watch the Fire TV on it, but honestly, I don't use it that often. So six out of 10. These fingerprint door handles that I have all over my house, I love them so much. I would say that they're near perfect, but they do have a micro USB port to charge them instead of USB-C. So they're not perfect, nine out of 10. I have NFC tags hidden throughout the entire house that I can scan and it can control my smart home, but I forget where I put them. Like I have some right behind this wall plate and I almost never use it. So four out of 10. For my smart home hub, I'm running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4. It does have its shortcomings, but it has way more pros. I love Home Assistant, 10 out of 10. Tell me one good reason why our smart home hub isn't a 10 out of 10. Um, okay. The other night you had to debug Home Assistant for like two hours, seven out of 10, <sighs> sorry. So those are all my ratings. Your ratings might be completely different and that's okay. Hopefully this was just helpful to see what might be worth it or what might not be. Thanks for watching. Hey, made you a banana split. I rate this a one out of 10. No, no, one out of 10 is like the worst. 10 out of 10 is the best. No, I know, one out of 10. It's missing sprinkles, a cherry on top, whipped cream, caramel, cookies, M&Ms, cheesecake bites, hot fudge, brownies, Reese's peanut butter cups, gummies.